exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell. The term genius is fairly common in our language today. I wonder how many of you realize that the term originated with the old Arabian Nights concept of the genie. You know, the magical creature that came in a bottle and had such wonderful powers. The story is about a whole planet of geniuses. Genie. Uh, interesting people to try to enslave, you know. Laboratory scientists have as much fun as anybody else, you know. One of the laboratory laws, sometimes called Finagle's Law or Murphy's Law, goes, in any laboratory experiment, if something can go wrong, it will. Well, this is the story of a planet-sized laboratory experiment in which something could go wrong. Professor Heim to His Excellency Marshal Gorham. The ship is now in orbit about the planet of destination. Good. Good. Have a lifeboat prepared for descent with an invisibility screen. Yes, Your Excellency. How many crewmen will you want to take along? None. There'll be just myself and you, Professor Heim. Sir, you, the marshal, landing on a barbarian world without even an, an escort, and begging your pardon, sir, but... Do you mean that the Grand Marshal of the Galactic Imperial Armed Forces can't carry out an undercover inspection on a backward planet without a dozen Marines clanking in his wake? No, sir. No, sir. And please remember that the people down there have no weapon more powerful than a bow and arrow. Whereas I will be carrying a nuclear blaster under my coat. Yes, sir. Of course, Your Excellency. And while we are down there on that planet, uh, Professor Heim, stand by for possible action. We may have to bombard the place with cobalt missiles. Wipe all the life off it. Sterilize the entire planet, sir? You heard me, Professor. I said we may have to. Not that we will. It depends on what I find down there. That peaceful, primitive world may turn out to be just another stupid scientific experiment. Or it may turn out to be the worst danger the Empire and all its stars have faced for a thousand years. Now, I want you, Professor. I'm in my office at once. Over. Yes, Your Excellency. Over and out. Oh, there you are, Professor Heim. Yes, Marshal Gorham, here I am. You've arrived at your experimental planet. I know. I was just watching it float there among the constellations. I don't know a more beautiful sight in the universe. Well, break out the native customs for us, too. We're going down. At once? I am a military man, Professor, not one of your psychologists. Now, so far, your people have spent 1,500 years studying that planet. But as for me, there's war on the Imperial borders, and I can spare three days. Three days to decide to decide whether we can let your experiment go on or whether to to discontinue it, shall I say? But only three days. Marshal, you don't realize it. it would take a week just to explain the statistics of... I know, I've heard it all. Fifteen hundred years ago, the Psychological Research Foundation decided to learn what makes human history tick by running controlled experiments. So it took a lot of uninhabited planets and put different kinds of people on them. Well, their memories wiped out, Marshal. The first generation started out knowing as little as animals. They, they had to discover everything for themselves. Fire, language, the wheel. Do you imagine that their descendants could have learned enough to menace us? To threaten an empire that for 3,000 years has controlled millions of planetary systems? We've been through all this before, I am. I've told you again and again, I'm not worried about your other experimental worlds. They're still cavemen or less. But this planet here, pure genius stock, a planet where nobody has an IQ below 150, and God knows how high they go. Well, I just can't tell about them. And His Majesty is worried, too. There have been rumors. He sent me here himself to decide whether or not those rumors could be true. But the people down there don't even know the Galactic Empire exists. Why, the men there are still farming with plows and sailing in steamships. Sure, sure, one of it. Ordinary men on Earth with an average IQ of 100, needed maybe half a million years to get as far as your geniuses have in 1,500. I understand they've already developed Newtonian physics, chemical batteries, telescopes, world governments. At that rate, they'll be visiting the other planets of this system in 50 years. They'll reach the stars in a century, and then they'll be loose in the Galactic Empire. 
Do you think they'd fit tamely into the caste system like good subjects of the emperor? Why, they couldn't even if they tried. They'd produce a new invention and a new philosopher every day. And that would mean the end of stability, and that, Professor, would mean the end of the empire. So you say, but you're a soldier. You don't understand. Yes, I know. I'm a dirty militarist who can't see past the end of my own guns. All I'm good for is killing, huh? And you're a noble intellectual scientist. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that guff before, Professor, and I've gotten pretty tired of it. But I tell you, the genius people are, are cooperative and... My orders are to inspect the place and decide for myself whether they're right or not. So that's what I'm going to do. Come along, I'm... Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. When driving, luck can stay with you for years. But on the road, it can leave you in a split second, a tragic split second. So drive carefully. You will live longer and you will arrive alive. There's been considerable discussion of what constitutes good and evil over the last few millenniums. But... You know, there's an interesting comment someone made. I don't know where it did originate. Melodrama is the conflict between good and evil. And tragedy is the conflict between good and good. When two good men, each with a good point to make, get into conflict, that's where real tragedy starts. All right, Professor. I've got the lifeboat into the atmosphere and leveled off. So where do I head now? I'm. Wake up, you wool-headed dreamer. Uh, I'm sorry, Marshal. I, I was thinking, looking out the porthole and thinking. What about? How lovely the sky is. So blue. And the land below, mountains and forests and hopeful young farms. Oh, no. A poet yet. Well, I'm thinking about my job of inspection. Where shall we go? Mm. Fly north, northeast for 700 kilometers and you'll find this planet's largest city. It's also the capital of their world government. That'll do. I should be able to observe a pretty good cross-section of the genius race. Do you seriously believe you can decide the fate of an entire world on the basis of what you see in one city? How do you expect to learn anything even there? You don't speak any of the local languages, not even the international one that developed. You'll talk for both of us. We'll claim to be visitors from a long ways off, the opposite hemisphere. We'll just wander around town for a couple of days, and I'll get the feel of the place. You, you mean you, you decide whether these people live or die just on the basis of a, of a hunch? Now, here we are. Landed in an empty meadow. To sure nobody will happen by. Well, what do they do? The lifeboat is invisible. Well, even so. Well, we don't want the genius people learning the truth, uh, do we, Professor? Well, of course not. And on that, you and I do agree. But my own motive is that I, I don't want to spoil the experiment. Come on, let's get moving. We'll have to hike into the city. Oh, it's nice outdoors. Sunshine. I don't know when I last breathed air that didn't come out of a tank. And you turn all this into black radioactive ash. Come on, I said, let's start walking. Well, there's a road. Hmm. It's pretty well paved. Oh, yes. Ten years ago, this was a livestock trail. Today, they're driving steam automobiles over it. I predict that ten years from now, the first airplane will use this for a landing strip. Where's the mass market to support all that progress? There isn't much of one. Actually, most people here are still riding around in buggies. You see, they have a unique social system. The average man on this planet would rather buy a new book than a new gadget. But at the same time, their engineers keep on making inventions because a mind of such power can't help being creative. And I tell you, the Empire can't afford what you call creativeness. <laughs> So this is their biggest city. Why? There are about a million people in it. <laughs> you call that a city? Oh, considering the small population of this world, yes. <laughs> it's backward, all right. Carts pulled by animals. 
Water pumped by windmills, bearded men in clothes of vegetable fiber, wood in plaster houses, gas lamps. That's what I, I keep telling you, Marshal. These people aren't demons. But they're as human as you and I. They're born the same way as us. Grow up, learn, love, laugh, weep and die like human beings anywhere in all space and time. They simply happen to be more intelligent. Let them live. Seventy generations ago, they were savages. They didn't even know how to chip a flint. And now they've come to this. Yes. Our observers mingling with him in disguise have already learned more about his particle dynamics than... I'm sure, this city is still primitive. But in another hundred years, they have schools, laboratories. They don't frown on artists and scientists and philosophers. They glorify them. So, in a hundred years, they'll be out among the stars. And we don't dare allow that. But they won't, Marshal. Not necessarily. If only you'd let me show you the economic data... For instance, the great uninhabited spaces they still have right on their home planet. Shut up, I'm thinking. Thinking? <laughs> I don't think you're able to. What did you say? Uh, nothing. I have a knife, Grand Marshal Gorham. You don't know that, do you? You think I'm just another ineffectual little dreamer, don't you? Well, you may find out different. <laughs> If by militarist we mean someone who believes that it is necessary to use physical force to carry out, to implement a theory, a belief, then uh, it looks to me like Professor Heim has become a militarist. He intends to use force, doesn't he? Peralto, Solas. Heard that. Uh, Saban, hostet. What did he say, that, that Balhoff or whatever he was? He wished us good night in the international language. He thinks we're foreigners, you remember? Ha! <laughs> if he only knew how foreign. That's a cheap way to feel superior, isn't it? Oh, shut up, Heim. I'm still trying to decide what to do about this planet. There are too many paradoxes. The waiter in the restaurant wanted to ask you about the ethnology of the country he thought we came from. This is a nice, clean hotel room, but it doesn't have running water. And yet the clerk downstairs was reading what I swear must have been a mathematical journal. Does that make them monsters? Under the social system here, such routine jobs are done by students. And, of course, every person on this planet goes through at least five years of college. But that's all it that amounts to, Gorham. A whole world of long-haired dreamers who are experimenting with aircraft and rockets, who developed the theory of evolution before they learned how to smelt iron. I don't trust them. Of course, you don't understand them. You're too... I, I, I mean... Too stupid? Isn't that what you're going to say, Professor? I'm just a dumb militarist who worked his way from private soldier to grand marshal of the Galactic Empire. No fine scientist, just a hired hand keeping the barbarian raiders off your scientific back. Well, Professor Heimer, I happen to be the man who will decide what's to become of this planet of geniuses. And have you decided yet, Your Excellency? Not yet. I can still take a couple of days to... Two more days? After the Foundation work of 1,500 years? Hey, what are you doing? This is a knife in my hand, Marshal Gorham. Don't move. If you reach for that blaster, I'll kill you. You're going, going, going crazy, huh? No. You're the crazy one. You're the lunatic who wouldn't blood out man's last best hope, this planet. You'll allow yourself three days to decide the whole future of the world. Now unbuckle that blaster. Don't let your hand come near the trigger. I'll drop it on the floor. Take it over to me. So. Now I've got you where I want you. But, Professor, I haven't decided anything yet. I might decide this experiment is safe. I might still report to the Emperor. There's nothing to be afraid of. He can forget your race. Yeah, you might. But I know you won't. I'm going to kill you, Marshal Gorham. I'm going to report to the spaceship captain that you died accidentally. And then I'm going to hope that the next Imperial Inspector will be more reasonable. Look out! Stand back, you fool! No! I only stabbed you in the arm that time, Marshal Gorham. But you're in a corner now. I'll get you this time. Go! Go, Varadan! Go along! I don't go along, you wreck! Who's done it, Sophie? Go! Go! You... You... You spoke... You spoke their language. You already know the language of this planet... Yeah. The attendant has the key, of course. He's coming in. Drop that knife, Professor Heim. He's a husky chap. Shalom, Yeah. Take the order. 
Drop that knife, I said, Professor. Yes, of course. Sit down, Heim. You look more shocked than I am. Gavala no matter, then. He's gone after the first aid kit for me. Not that you hurt me seriously. I, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. And you, you're a native of this planet yourself. Yes. I was born here, though I've lived most of my life out in the Empire. <laughs> we thought we were keeping a planet full of geniuses and ignorance. How long have you known? We began to suspect the truth 500 years ago. And we discovered that all life had evolved from lower forms, but couldn't find a subhuman ancestor for man. And finally, your disguised observers were identified. We even used blind man techniques to spot those wearing invisibility screens. <laughs> Did you really expect you could go on fooling a race with twice your brain power? <laughs> well, we thought so. Yes, I, I suppose it was foolish. <laughs> Some of us wormed our way into space as throwaways are, are in disguise, that sort of thing. People here live quietly so as not to give the show away. We don't tell our children the truth till they're old enough to keep up the pretense. But meanwhile, for the past 300 years, our agents have been out in the Empire learning everything you know, posing as citizens working up into the key positions of your government. We can do that by sheer merit. Yes, obviously, you can become imperial marshals. Quite. <laughs> and when the Emperor got suspicious, he... He sent me, his trusted soldier, a notorious anti-intellectual, to check up for him. Naturally, I was going to give this planet a clean bill of health, but I had to string you along first to make it look good. Evidently, I put on a better act than I had planned. And now that I, I know your secret... I'll have to report that you were accidentally killed here, Professor. But don't worry. All you have to do is uh, spend the rest of your life here as one of us. I don't think you'll mind that. Oh, no, not personally. I, I, I'd enjoy it. I used to envy the people on this world. But uh, when you, uh, well, your race, I mean, when you've completely taken over the Galactic Empire from within, uh, what do you plan to do? Well, we'll remodel it, shall I say. I'm afraid you wouldn't understand exactly what we intend to do. It, it's a little beyond your grasp. But, but it will be for the benefit of the ordinary Galactic citizen, too. <laughs> The poor, backward, benighted galactic empire. They say that the first requirement for teaching a dog to do tricks is that you have to know more than the dog. If you want to teach a planet full of geniuses to do tricks for you, first make sure you know more than the geniuses. You can enslave some kinds of entities, but you can't enslave, you can't impose on entities who are more intelligent, more thoughtful, more wise than you yourself. Uh, what will happen is they'll turn out to be helping you in disguise. Fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Heard in our cast tonight were Ron Dawson and Al Lucio. Script was by Powell Anderson, produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. Guy Wallace speaking. Uh-huh.